Hey, welcome to another episode of 5 Minute Computer Science. My name is Mr. K and today we're going to be looking at different types of processes. Now, you need to know about four, so let's talk about those today. You need to know about parallel processing, risk processes, CISC processes, and very importantly, a GPU. So, let's put five minutes on the clock and let's make it happen. Okay, so let's have a look at parallel processing, not to be confused with multi-core or core processing. The idea behind this is very simple. You've got lots of CPUs working together to get a really large job or a huge amount of processing done in one go. So it's not like multi-core where the core is built in. These are separate CPUs. So take, for example, a weather forecasting system, a simulation program, the NHS doing its pay uh, at the end of the month. Well, rather than having one CPU take hundreds of hours, you can actually have a supercomputer that does that for you. So the job scheduler takes a very large job and dispatches it to all the CPUs connected to it. So it might be the case that um, CPU 3 is free, so CPU 3 is giving some work. And then when it's finished, CPU 3 sends the work back or the job done back to the scheduler. And now it's free. These three might still be busy doing something else. And so the job scheduler sends another task off to CPU 3 for it to carry on and then return it back and so on. So this means that you can get a very large processor very, very quickly. Take, for example, the IBM Blue Genie. That's 4,098 processors all working together, allowing for 560 teraflops of processing. That's huge and the kind of thing you might want to use for 3D artificial intelligence, that kind of processing. So it might look really good and it is. Parallel processing has several advantages. You can use pipelining to make things very quick. You can avoid the bottleneck for one human because of course no processor ever, ever just sat there waiting to process. It keeps getting new jobs from the scheduler. But the main disadvantage is that data rel that relies on the result of previous operations cannot be made using parallel processing. Because that one job might actually be broken down into you know, hundreds of processes that are carrying out that one single job. Processes are responsible for helping the CPU carry out the tasks that are required. So, although you might get a normal CPU with a single core or a multi-core processor, any kind of intensive graphic work or sound work has to be done by the CPU as well as run the operating system and do everything else that you're doing. Well, you can actually get core processors that work alongside it like the GPU. So the job of the GPU is to render graphics which are 2D or 3D. So you might actually want to remember a, this thing here, right? You might remi remember yourself as thinking, well, a graphical processing unit is actually a graphic card. All right. And a graphics card is used to help the CPU do less work on the graphics and more work looking after the other parts of the programs and the operating system. So the idea behind the GPU is that if there's anything that's graphical related, it's done by the GPU. Because unlike the CPU, which might have a few cores, the GPU has lots and lots, or maybe hundreds of cores working together. And they're only for the purpose of graphical processing. And so you can get some pretty decent graphics and 3D rendering as a result. So here's a quick diagram to show how that works. You might have various lines of code available but the code that's intensive in terms of graphics is passed on to the GPU whilst all the other code is executed by the CPU. Alright, so let's have a quick look at this. RISC processors and CISC processors. Now there are two different types of uh, instruction set that can be and are used and you need to be familiar with both. It'll be helpful if you have a look at a diagram to explain this. So I'm going to show you this as an example. In CISC processing, the idea behind it is that you try to use the least number of lines or amount of code to get your job done. So here's some code, multiply A with B and then store the value back in A. Well, that's one line of code, but actually four instructions because you need to know what's in A and then look in what's in B and then multiply the two and then save it back in A. Right, that might sound pretty efficient but let's have a look at what it looks like in risk risks idea is the opposite have lots of very simple instructions each taking one clock cycle which should pro allow the processing to be quicker so take for example the comparison here in CISC we've got this multiply a with B and store it back in a but in risk the same thing is written out in four different simple code load 
register 1 with A, load register 2 with B, multiply register 1 and register 2 and then store the value back in register 1. And because these are four different uh, instructions and four different cycles that can carry them out, it means that the processing is done pretty quickly. You might want to pause and have a look at this at the disadvantages and the advantages of risk. But it's well worth you making sure you understand this element of it. That's been 5 Minute Computer Science. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.